I had been involved with the minors with George and then with the 20s the year after. And then uh, after that, then I just got involved with the ladies last year and uh, the ladies again this year. So I've been kind of lucky that a lot of the people that I've been coaching, a lot of the players I've been coaching have been just really, really good footballers. And uh, it's simple enough to deal with them. Like they're, um, they, they're all just have a really good attitude and especially with the girls. The girls, um, they're a special bunch of girls. They're really, really like trailblazers for the town, for the people around. Um, from my point of view, I remember we won a school at Ireland in, when I was in TY and uh, th the big thing was the girls had gone and done it before. Like they went to Fela's, they won both of them, they won a school at Ireland. And then you're kind of thinking as like a person in town, you're like, geez, maybe I'm a good enough footballer to go win that as well. And like, th they don't have any kind of fear. Like even going to a club at Ireland, like this is no real, like they, they're not really getting too excited about it. They're just excited about the football. Like they're not really getting sidetracked about the razzmatazz of like even getting today, all this sort of stuff. Like the girls are still kind of tuned into what they have to do. So um, please God, we'll, we'll stay tuned in and um, we'll get to uh, to show how good we are on Saturday. But um, yeah, no, I, I've been very fortunate with the players that I've been dealing with have had a massive, like really, really good attitude and then have just been quality footballers. So it's kind of been a dream so far with the coaching, yeah. Do they play a little bit without fear as well when you consider that they have won so much together as a group, this group of players? They were very young when they won their first off title. They've reeled off titles in a row, a couple of Leinsters now over the last three years as well. Mm. Is the fact that they maybe grow up together, does that help preparing them for an All-Ireland final as well? Oh, big time, like, definitely. Like, they, they've been there and they've done all that before, you know, so... Um, like I said already about being tested, like they've been tested so many times and they've gone to massive dog fights with big clubs. Like I remember when they went down to Beira and Cork that time, like they were playing against massive, massive clubs and just coming out on top. And uh, they've done that since they were 12 and 14 years of age. So for them to come and like, like we said about the All Ireland semi final, like a massive club like Inch Rovers coming down, like the girls weren't frightened by that. Like they, they, they didn't pass on your marks on that all that they had won. It was just like, let's have your best 15 and we'll go at our best 15 and let's have it out. Like, you know, that's what they were kind of, that's their attitude. And uh, they just get really excited by a challenge now, which is a great place to be because for people that kind of haven't played in big games and stuff, you can get like the big occasion can kind of overawe you. Um, but for the girls, they just get excited about getting to play on a big stage and a big club coming to play against them, do you know? Is there something in the water in West Offaly this year? Because, you know, Shannon Bridge, for Ban winning the senior this year, Shannon Bridge still involved this coming Sunday as well, the girls winning the Leinster title too. What's been the, the secret of the success this year? Um, it's just, like, to be fair, what happens is, kind of, I find when, when one team starts winning, it kind of generates a buzz. And then, so there's a real, real buzz around West Offaly at the minute. And then you have, like, Rhinus won the Hurling and the Camogie as well. So, like, like once one people kind of, once they see someone doing it, you kind of want to do it yourself. And you want to kind of add to it. And, you, like, winning's kind of a habit, really. So, to be fair, um, like, the girls just do it. Like, they're, they're a brilliant bunch of girls. And then, for me personally, anyways, if I was playing football, that kind of generate a bit of a buzz for you you kind of want to go out and do it as well and um, to be fair to the lads they've all like been like played quality football this year and um, Shannon Bridge are improving the whole time and it's really exciting for West Offaly and really exciting for Shannon Bridge and for the people around to go and follow them and uh, please God they get to do it on Sunday week as well. You mentioned the girls and you mentioned St. Rhinus um, for both Kate and also for Roshan Egan as well they've had a lot of games over the last few weeks to try and juggle and great success for them the weekend just gone by as well have you had to give any kind of special consideration to them, given the workload the two of them have had? Um, well, yeah, it's it's kind of a balancing act with uh, two girls. And uh, Mark Dunn, who's over the Camogie, is he's a quality, quality coach and just a good man. So he kind he he really looks after their like their welfare, and he he does a lot of monitoring of their wellness and um, how their legs are feeling or how to sleep, even stuff like that. Mark is really tuned into all that, so he keeps an eye on that for them. And then for us, it's just say of a hurling week, we let them go and do their camogie and then of a football week they'll come train with us so it's just kind of and, and, and to be fair it keeps them kind of fresh too getting to change it and then they're getting to play in big games every weekend which is the stuff of dreams really for for girls that age or for lads or for anybody and um, so so yeah it's just been kind of a balancing act between w with da kind of deals with a lot of that and mark so the two of them are kind of constantly in touch and um, sorting it out Kate's had just a remarkable few weeks as well. You know, she shoots lights out in the semi final for you guys against Inter Rovers. She scores a hat trick of goals yesterday in the Camogie final as well. She's just turned 18. Um, what a talent. Yeah, ah, look, Kate's a good girl. She's, um, 
Kate prepares very, very, very well. She, she, she's really tuned into trying to be the best that she can be. But Kate's very, very lucky in that she's got to play with really good teams. Do you know, you often have a girl or a lad that's very, very good and they can take a lot of attention be, or, or, or they get a lot of attention because they mightn't have many threats around them. Whereas in the ladies' football and in the camogie, like there's f like all other five forwards and the people delivering the ball are seriously, seriously good. So like for even for Rhinus yesterday, like if you deal with Kate, you have to deal with like how are you going to manage Siobhan, how are you going to manage Grania, how are you going to manage all the other girls that are there in the forward line. Like they have so many threats. So to be fair, she's very lucky that she's kind of getting to play with with really good teams that take a lot of heat off her and deliver her really really good ball. But um, no, she she's a great girl. She's um, she really applies herself to everything she does, whether it's school, whether it's her training, whether it's whatever it is. And um, yeah, so she, hopefully now she keeps producing it now in the the next weekend. And we'll talk about it then, how she's getting on. How is the week going to pan out now? We're a few days out from the All-Ireland final, getting ready to play Nate Paul of Antrim in the decider. Um, how do you kind of tailor things then for this week? Um, so we train tomorrow night. Um, so we're going to train tomorrow night, Tuesday night under lights. And then we train again Friday night. But Friday night will be harmless enough. It'll probably be more of a chat than anything. And then uh, we rip into it on Saturday and we'll see how we get on. Um, but it's kind of... So tomorrow night we'll try and play a good bit of football and then... Uh, Friday night will just be kind of basics, just getting your kicking in, getting your hands in, um, and then having a chat, and then uh, getting excited about the big dance on Saturday. So that's what it's all about, really, this week. Have you been able to do much analysis on Nate Paul, or is it just about getting Nate Kieran's game like this? Well, I personally haven't looked at it, at Nate Paul at all. I spend a lot of time looking at what we're doing and how we can improve, um, and I think it like. Our biggest thing is like when you get to that stage, you kind of just want to really show how good you are. Um, so like, there's no point really getting too wound up about the opposition. I don't think uh, that's my philosophy, anyways. I think if we can get our stuff right, do you know, it, we we give it our best, and if our best is good enough, it's good enough. If not, whatever. But uh, it's up to us to try and make sure that we get our stuff right, uh, and we've all everything covered, and uh, we're as prepared as we can be. So my my prep is all about just looking after ourselves and making sure our basics are right come Saturday to really just show what we're about. You mentioned, you know, playing yourself. Do you ever feel like you kind of got a tough deck in life, the fact that you had to give up football as early as you did? Ah, uh, no. Like, tough deck's kind of a bit, <laughs> like, over the top. But no, I know, like, sometimes you kind of go around feeling sorry for yourself that you didn't get to play or whatever. Like, like especially when the boys get to play on the big stage, like county final stuff this year, like, that was so exciting. And you kind of, the only reason you really want to play is just kind of, you just want to go out and show what you're about, like, you know, so, like, that's the biggest thing you'd miss out on. You'd be kind of raging that you don't get to do that. But, um, like, a tough deck, like, you know, like, I'm very lucky that I've got a brilliant family. I've got brilliant friends I've got like I'm involved with girls there that are winning and um, they're a great bunch of people so like I'm surrounded by such good people like like it's it's only it's a small thing really when you think about it. like everybody has stuff that they have to deal with in life so mine's only a small one really when you think about it and uh, I'm kind of a happy-go-lucky sort of a fella I just kind of I get excited about like even just small things like going to training or get like a gym I found is a big thing for me and uh, like stuff like that I even have uh, aunties uncles granny uh, my cousins me and Jerry like you know like like stuff like that I'm very lucky in in, in the people I'm surrounded by and uh, a tough deck could kind of be like selling it short when other people are dealing with more stuff like you know so like I kind of no I, I wouldn't say it's a tough deck now. Is that kind of over time you've taken that attitude? Because I mean, I'd imagine when you got the news initially from the doctors, that can't have been an easy time. No, like yeah, um, the first co the the first year and that it's it's funny like when it happened like of course it was like geez our our whole house was kind of just like what like it's hard to deal with because our whole life was around like at the time I was kind of going well with the rugby and I was just after coming back from Australia and uh, so things were looking really exciting from the sports side of it. Um, but uh, yeah, it was kind of a massive shock for me to change. But it gives me a great chance to like experience things that I might have gotten to experience because of sport. So like, I got to travel to see cool festivals this summer. Um, I, I stuff like stupid stuff like a couple of the boys we went jiving there in the well one time. So like stuff like that. Like you know, like I kind of be I chance anything. Like you know, I when we were with Ireland, a lad. Uh, give us a talk he was Donica Callan's brother and he he was a psychologist and he explained about being comfortable outside of your comfort zone and I kind of have taken that on board so like stuff like I was chatting to AGM outside we were saying that like I'd love to take up like a photography course or something like that like just do different things and since I got like I, I'm using it as an advantage that like I can do stuff that the lads can't you know like the boys have to give it a, it's a massive commitment now so I've got so much time to myself so I'm trying to 
like be the best person that I can be from it and uh, yeah so I've used it as kind of an advantage really Does the coaching help in that side of things as well because it keeps you involved with the game in a different way Yeah big time like and, and, and I spent a lot of time at it and uh, like you know I, I got I was very lucky that I got to deal with unbelievable coaches like when I got to Australia that time like Isaacio Halpin was with us and Ty Canelli and um, you know there was there was like it was cool like you know I got to deal with big people and then uh, we had brilliant coaches and I was with Ireland that time and so like for me it's cool to get to try and deal with people then uh, with the girls you know so like y it's not just a matter of coaching you're trying to coach and make it as exciting as you can for them and as fun as you can for them but um, yeah you're, you're dealing with people too which is good for you for a professional point of view too and uh, uh, and like for me going forward so um, yeah no it does keep me involved it, it keeps me active anyways as well and uh, it's cool for me to even get to like with Kate and, and with, with some of my best friends with the girls you know like it's cool for me to try and help them improve so yeah it's it, it's exciting for me and uh, yeah I love it How sweet would it be for Ned Kieran to get an All-Ireland medal this weekend then? Yeah, it would be fairly sweet, all right, and it'd be a fair old party back in Fraban afterwards, I'd say. Um, but, yeah, no, look, at our biggest thing is, please, God, we get to show what we're all about this weekend. Um, you can kind of get wound up about All-Ireland medals, and people get wound up about gear and about the day, but, like, that's not what it's about, you know. We're, it's about 60 minutes of football and us playing against a really, really good team and, and, and testing ourselves and seeing what we're about, you know, getting your character tested and getting your basics tested. Like, you know, so um, please, God, we'll take it as a, just another game. We get to show what we're all about and uh, we'll give it our dead level best, that's for sure, and uh, see where it takes us.